Hello and welcome to Hello Health, a weekly show where we have conversations about healthy living. We are your hosts, Karen and Gwen. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. Thanks for being here, friends. Yes, we are talking about something I'm very passionate about, sleep. Something that both of us just happen to be lacking in today. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. I almost, Gwen, I almost said, why don't we show up in our pajamas today? <laughs> To really add some like flavor to the show, you know. Nobody knows if I'm wearing pajama pants right now. That's true. Nobody That's true. knows. <laughs> but you. So um, it's funny, just on a side note, when they have, they've had pajama day at school before, my son's going to kill me, but he said to me, mom, I just sleep in my underwear. <laughs> I have, I've had to buy him pajamas to wear to pajama day at school. And yes, he has an elementary sure. school. <laughs> and then everybody and then he'll come home and be like oh man we did it wrong everyone's wearing onesies this year I'm like yeah right yeah <laughs> oh pajama day pajama All right. <laughs> sleep is is so important so important and i feel like I'm going to quote my favorite author on sleep and he said that sleep has become like the ugly stepsister not the, I'm sorry, not the ugly stepsister, the forgotten stepsister of health. Yeah, but it's not very glamorous. It's, it's not sure. glamorous. You know, we're thinking about, oh, I want to work out because I want my body to look good. I want to eat right so I can feel better. Um, we're, I think as a society, we're doing better in those arenas, like taking a little bit more time to take a walk um, or, you know, buy some organic food or eat more salads or whatever. But sleep is something that we neglect. Yeah. And I'm going to start off the show by saying I am not a super sleeper. I am not. But not I, am, <laughs> I am on a journey to get there. That's why this show today is very exciting for me to share information that I've learned so far. Um, and hopefully some helpful tips to help people sleep. Because yeah. everybody wants to be able to sleep and wake up and feel good, right? It's, I mean, oh, yeah, it's essential. And it's something that I don't know tons about. Like, I I mean, we learn about it in school a bit. So I have the mm -hmm. sort of foundation. But um, I'm not great always at prioritizing it. Like, a lot of times I'll, I'm classic for, like, staying up a little bit too late and forcing myself to wake up super early because I'm I'm gonna become a morning person one of these days. It's gonna <laughs> happen. <laughs> oh and my gosh. So then I sort of am running in that lacking. Um, and another like time when it really makes me think of is when you're a new mom. <laughs> Yes, yes. That's yes, like yes, the yes, first yes. time that anyone ever even talked mm -hmm. to me about the importance of sleep or or what life is like with a lack of sleep, you know? Yeah. Before that, it was yeah. just like, sleep, that's not important. It's just what you do when you're dead. Isn't right. There, isn't there that saying? Something about that's it. That's it. I'll sleep when, I, when I'm dead. Yeah. Right. But let's, let's get into it. So um, you're right. You know, for me, I first really felt sleep deprivation after I had my first kid 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago. And um, it's, yeah, it's something you just don't think about. But I read this book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. And it's like a global juggernaut of a book. Like it's really taken the world by storm. So I'll, I'll put this banner back up at the end, but if anyone's interested in learning more about sleep, just in a really helpful, uh, clear way, please read this book. It's not narrated by him if you do the audiobook, but it's narrated by this British guy. So it sounds like really smart. And <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everything, all, everything he says is very clear, concise, and just easy to listen to. And oh, man, nice. keep he packs in so much like useful information, but also shocking information in this book. Okay. And so when we're talking today, I'm gonna to use a lot of what he said because he's really like the pioneer in this uh, field of sleep. I love it. 
I mean, just so everybody knows, I am like a student in this class today. <laughs> we'll see that you know you know more than you think. So just a few things like why why is sleep important? Um, weight loss is a huge thing right now. You know, I mean, it's been a huge thing forever, right? But everyone yeah. wants to lose weight. And you're not doing yourself a favor if you deprive yourself of sleep because when you um, have sleep deprivation, your body will start uh, breaking down muscle instead mm. of the fat. Okay. Because you're you're tired and your body's trying to hold on to that fat. Right. That's right. A survival instinct. That's survival mm. instinct. So interesting. So for many people who, myself included, will sometimes force myself to wake up even if I've not had the adequate amount of sleep to go for a run in the morning, mm -hmm. um, there's potential that it might be worth prioritizing sleep. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't going to get into too much of this, which I, I won't because I'm not like into sports and I'm not an athlete, but uh, if you want to know more, you can read this book. He's done a few podcasts as well. If you can Google okay. his name, Matthew Walker, but he talks about sleep for um, for better athletic performance. Uh, big names like basketball stars, you know, um, baseball, you know, just huge major athletes. This is how unathletic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like um, they they prioritize sleep. They get like nine, ten hours of sleep, before, you know, during the season to keep right. their their body in peak performance. And there was an Olympic athlete, and I wish I remembered who it was, but. He won the gold medal right after he had, he had been sleeping up until 30 minutes before he had to actually do whatever he did. Of course, this is like terrible information because I don't know who he was or what the sport was. But, um, but I love that because we had yeah. we done it and we'll probably, I don't know if we'll come back to this, but your body goes into restoration, like it, into yeah. a restorative state when you're sleeping. So absolutely. Interesting. So getting back to weight loss, it also makes you... Uh, eat better. So when you are sleep deprived, you make, um, it's, they've done a lot of studies on this. You make poorer choices. You choose more, uh, carbs, chocolate, um, salt yeah. when you're, when you're tired. That makes so, so much sense. really, really interesting. And it does make sense because I think of when I'm really tired, I want some like dark chocolate and some coffee. Yeah. That's what I want. I want sugar. Like I'm craving mm -hmm. sugar because my body's like, you need a hit of energy. Something. Yeah. Okay. Right. The thing is not like cocaine, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Later. laughs> All right. Uh, sleep to lower anxiety and depression. It's been scientifically proven that sleep, adequate sleep makes you less anxious and less depressed. Wow. It really helps your mood levels. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. And huge and right now. Yeah. And this one was the one that I was like, wow, when he talks about this in the book, it helps Ooh. your body fight cancer. So I have a study here. It was done at um, University of California. And they took a bunch of healthy young men and they had them sleep only, it was 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., so four hours of sleep. And they found that it swept away 70% of the natural killer cells in the immune system. Whoa. As opposed so, to eight hours of sleep. So that's like, that helps your body fight cancer, but also yeah. <clears throat> everything. Like everything. from autoimmune system. disease to, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, wow. that was, that's alarming. So you go in, yeah. you're talking about four hours of sleep. How many college students only get like four hours of sleep? It's just, what, what you do in college, right? You just drink coffee. I remember my brother talking about like staying up like 48 hours or something crazy like that, just drinking coffee. Woo! Just Yay. because. Yay, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, it, it, he talks about it in the book a little bit too, about how these specifically for college students or grad students that spend, spend all night, you know, cramming for a test, that that's actually the worst thing you can do. Because sleep helps memory retention. Mm. So and it's not only I'm just gonna jump in quick though yeah. and, and just like relate that to my age bracket. 
<laughs> which is my age bracket. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's like um, going to, you know, reflect in our work and how we yeah. parent and just how we're showing up in our lives. And it's super easy. We're not necessarily cramming for exams, but we're, you know, working. Maybe we're working late hours. Um, and we might even just be staying up super late, like scrolling. And that's going to have a massive effect on how we show up the next day. So oh, yeah. Yeah. just so totally. totally. leave any of us out there that are no longer in our 20s. <laughs> or 30s. I have I have a couple more months. You do. You do. Live Two more months. Woo! Okay, so sleep for memory retention. And this is yeah, oh, yeah. I feel like such an mm -hmm. element. And just so everybody knows, today I am totally sleep deprived because there was a massive thunderstorm here last night. Mm -hmm. And I can feel it in my brain today. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right yeah man that's like a terrible feeling when you're just floating through your day like man what is it? <laughs> what's up um yes memory so so basically um sleep before you learn something new it refreshes your ability to make new memories mm. okay and then after you learn something new sleep adequate sleep is important because it helps you kind of imprint that memory into your brain Right. Yeah. It helps the me that memory retention. Um, also helps to process what you learned during. The I day. always when my because often I don't know <clears throat> with your kids, but with my kids, they'll often be like, "I don't want to go to bed," and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Oh, it's so important. You got to get good sleep because everything in your brain needs to have a chance to go into its filing system and I love that organized and." Yeah. They're like, awesome. I have a filing system in my brain. I'm like, yeah, you do. But it takes oh, yeah. sleep to organize it. <laughs> that is amazing, Gwen. I love that. <laughs> All right, so let's um, <clears throat> go into something a little bit controversial here. And I'm Ooh. not gonna make any, I'm not gonna make any judgments. I'm just gonna put some information out there. That's information and you can do more with it. Right. Sleeping pills. So there is something important that I feel like people need to know about sleeping pills. And this is not just me and my information. This is from studies in the book. <laughs> so Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Yeah, I refer back to Matthew Walker. But um, the studies that he's found is that sleeping pills put you in what he calls this called electric sleep. Mm. So it doesn't allow you to actually go into the deeper sleep and those longer brain waves, those deep brain waves. So you're, we're gonna get into stages of sleep in, a, in just a couple minutes, but it doesn't allow your body to repair. Right, so it's like process. That more shallow, so you're no, so you may not, so you may wake up and still feel tired and right. sleepy and without. You won't, you won't, hit that REM, you won't hit the, the deep sleep is the restorative sleep. Okay. So we're going to get into that in a second, but it robs you of that. Right. And same thing with alcohol. Okay. Alcohol does the same thing. And that's another thing where it's like, people think I'm going to have some wine to relax. To feel, and it does make you feel sleepy. You know, it does make you relaxed, but it doesn't allow you to get into that deep sleep. And you'll also wake up once that alcohol is worn off. Oh, so that's or why you might wake up at two in the morning and be like, I'm wide awake. Yeah. And that sugar, like if I always find if I've had too much wine, <laughs> I wake up at about two in the morning and I can just feel like sugar. Like I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, right. So how about like to play the devil's advocate maybe, mm -hmm. um, what mm -hmm. about, and maybe this is where reading the book would be super beneficial for anybody that is having a chronic sleep issue. Um, just to get clarity around that when you do fall into unhealthy sleep cycles, to reset your body 
would something, and maybe this isn't a question that probably we could answer, but maybe taking a sleeping pill or something to help assist with sleep would start to teach your body the rhythm at least maybe? I don't know. That's just a, does anyone yeah. have any thoughts on that? Let that, us yeah, if anyone has an experience with that, that'd be very interesting to know. I mean, it, it, I mean, like it rationally makes sense. Yeah. He does mention um, about cognitive, I think he said it was cognitive behavioral sleep therapy. Mm. That is a natural way of training your body to be able to sleep. And I mean, sense. let's face it, I'm going to put it out there. I know a lot of people that suffer with sleep disorders, yeah. insomnia, you, you name it. Sleep is not, it seems simple, but it's not simple for everybody. It's yeah. it can be very challenging. So I can completely understand why sleeping pills are huge, why so many people, you know, rely on them or take them from time to time. But I think it's important to note that, I mean, there are so many other alternative ways that you can help your body sleep. And, um, you know, talking with your doctor about it is, is really important and doing your own research. So if you look up this like cognitive behavioral sleep therapy, I believe you said it was called, um, that might be helpful. Yeah. Um, and we should maybe clarify that maybe it would be worth to try and find a functional medicine doctor to talk to. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Functional medicine doctor. I mean, they're, they're probably, I mean, just between us and everybody else who's watching, um, they're probably the ones that will actually take this seriously and not tell yeah, you to not just take a prescribe you for the sleeping pills. Right. Um, there are open-minded hundred percent doctors out there, but we shouldn't generalize like that. We shouldn't generalize, but I mean, if you're having trouble, you yeah. seek a functional medicine doctor. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> I want to note too, is that, you know, someone might say, see the show and say, oh, you know, I, I want Ambien and all right, I'm just going to get off. Well, now you have a problem because you go into this, um, what do you call it? About insomnia. It actually makes your insomnia worse. Mm because you get dependent on the drug. So you can find that you'll have worse insomnia than you did before you started taking the pill. Right, shoot, double-edged sword. So, so yeah. for anyone who's, watching, who's really struggling, but curious to figure it out, it sounds like this book is um, a really beautiful gateway into oh, yeah. a different way of thinking about sleep. It will make you really think, I mean, the cancer thing for me was huge hearing about just, just that one night of four hours of sleep, 70% of those killer cells in your immune system gone. So then, and then we wake up the next morning and we're uh, um, unrested. We feel like garbage. We feel like our body will go naturally into this sort of instinctual craving of sugar and mm. things that historically have given us a boost of energy, caffeine. And so then we're just creating sort of a perfect storm of right. not optimal <laughs> living right. health. And it could just perpetuate itself. So really bringing awareness to, wow, okay, like for myself today, I didn't sleep well last night. How can I support myself today um, right. so that I can set myself up for an incredible sleep tonight so that I can mm -hmm. know, like, if I know I slept two or three hours last night, I know that today I need to eat really nourishing food to really optimize my health and start to rebuild those <laughs> that immune system. That yeah, I've exactly. Right. Anyways, I feel like I'm off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important to note too that um, you know melatonin, which a lot of people have heard of. You know, sometimes people take melatonin supplements to help sleep, and that's you know there are all kinds of different um, views on that. And even in the alternative health world, you know, right. is it good? Is it bad? We don't really know, but we naturally have melatonin in our bodies, and we have levels. So. Um, my 12 year old has more melatonin in his body than I do. Right. Uh, so that's interesting to note too. That's why, you know, the circadian rhythm is really important about like 
when we're awake, when we're asleep, making sure, you know, with this artificial blue light, it kind of throws off our circadian rhythm. So it's important to kind of honor that, you know, get outside, get, or be near a window and get the sunshine from the day. And then when you're sleeping, be in a dark room, no gadgets, no blue light. You know, I know this is, really is the most classic. There's like a few really classic things that, that are advised, which is like, get off your screen an hour before bed, mm -hmm. um, sleep in a dark room, wake with the sun or like, you know, wake with like that light exposure or expose yourself to light when you wake up. Yes. I feel like it's all really solid advice, but I feel like it's not, it's like, it's like that eat your vegetables, just eat your vegetables. Just do it. Let's do it. And I, I think that the reality is there's a lot that goes into that. I think that a lot of people read books on screens or yeah. um, listen to music as they fall, you know, like relaxing music as they fall asleep or, you know, there's so many different layers to it. And so I, I'm just sharing this because I think that it is really easy to say, we must be off our screen an hour before bed. And it's really hard to do that for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Just do the best you can, figure out what a little starting point or something, figure out where you're willing to experiment with that idea. Or maybe it's about starting on the other end. Maybe it's about when you wake up, blazing open the curtains and standing there, just taking in the light. Maybe yes. Are you ready to start? You know, like kind of like, like Superman four, if anyone's seen that and no. like, the, the villain in Superman 4, created by Lex Luthor, uh, or found by Lex Luthor. Anyway, he gets energy from the sun. That's how he charges himself. So when you said that, open it up. I'm thinking of him, like, charging in the sun. Yes. Oh, man. I heard on, there's, like, a whole group of lots of people who do naked. Uh, oh, yeah. Two things. Start like lay, being under the stars naked, and but also being in an under the sun naked within the first yeah. twenty minutes of waking up. Yeah, like Dr. Mercola has like a private beach or whatever, and he walks for <laughs> twenty minutes naked on his beach. I'm always like, we can't all we can't all do that. Who are these people that can just have a balcony? <laughs> <laughs> Taking it in. Yeah, right. Hello, world. Wow. Imagine. Friends be like, morning, Gwen. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Natural. Anyway, that was a digression. <laughs> All right. So let's get into like just some information here so people can understand like stages of sleep. Because I think right. people, I'm not going to get into brain waves right now because that's another whole, whole other thing, but just stages of sleep. So we have awake, which obviously we're awake. We learn about the world, we're gathering information. Light sleep is where we spend most of our time when we're sleeping, but it, it, it's like a, a gateway to bring us into deeper levels of sleep. Now, as I noted before, drinking alcohol, uh, taking sleeping pills, it keeps you in that light sleep. Mm. Okay. Deep sleep. This is, this is really the good stuff. So deep sleep is that nice restorative sleep. Um, it's, your blood pressure drops, the blood flows into the muscles. Mm. There's more blood flow into the muscles, which is part of that repairing your body. Um, growth hormone is released. There's tissue and cell repair. That's all happening. I, I like it. Um, I like to think of it, someone described it as like flushing the waste. Yeah. Out of your brain. It flushes the waste out of your brain, flushes the toxins out of your brain. Uh, so it's just, it's so important to get into this deep sleep. And there are many ways that we have in our lifestyle that will prevent us from getting into this deep sleep. And then, um, oh, I should say it's 20% of our sleep, deep sleep. It's just 20% right. of, of the time we're asleep. Uh, and it all that also strengthens your memory and immune system. And, and uh, like for a lot of people who are trying to remove toxins in their life, uh, um, that, you know, might yeah. be a really great place to start or to focus on or 
draw attention to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as you said, you know, that short term memory, this is where short term memory gets put into long term memory or mm. we don't know how this happens, but the brain decides I need this. I don't need that. So this gets mm -hmm. filed. This gets thrown away. Go away. All right. So Take that's all happening in deep sleep. Taking out the trash. Exactly. Then our REM sleep. REM sleep okay. is so cool because your brain is actually awake. Oh. It's Your brain is firing the way it does when you're awake. That's why we have dreams. So uh -huh. when you have these vivid dreams, they're happening in REM sleep. Quick question. Okay. Yeah. Are you or anyone listening right now watching this, one of those people that wakes up remembering your dreams? Oh yeah. You are. Yes. I love it. <laughs> If I if I wake up and I don't remember a dream, I know it's going to be a bad day. Oh my gosh! I never remember I my love, dreams. <laughs> I love my dreams. I love them. And then I'll have like I'll remember a little bit, and then as I go through my day, I'll see something like, "Oh man, I had a dream about that last night." It's just it's so cool. I love, I love that. dreams. When I, I was love, my mom was really into dreams, and she every morning would be like, "She's like, I it's a practice. You need to practice remembering them." You need to bring awareness to it. So every morning we would have to tell her what we dreamt about. And I, we got better at it. We got better oh, at good. it. Oh, good. That's good. I've lost um, that. Nate, Sorry, Mom. I'm going to say Nathan, Nathan is with us today. And Hi, Nathan. He Do says, you remember your dreams? Nathan says he often remembers his dreams and definitely need my beauty sleep, beauty on the inside and out. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's, it is true. They say sleeping does make you more attractive. I mean, it's a superficial thing, but hey, who doesn't want to look attractive? Right? I mean, we can see it just like, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So <laughs> the rest. <rest. laughs> so we talked about during awake time, we're gathering information, right? During REM sleep, this is when your brain is processing what you learned from the day. Uh, it's good times. Um, it's restorative for your brain. Uh, but I love the fact that your brain is awake and that's why you're having those, yeah. those dreams. It's firing. Um, so that's why if you're in REM, you're able to, like if someone says your name, Gwen, Gwen, you'd be like, yeah. Now if someone say Gwen while you're in deep sleep, you'd be like, Oh, you come out. Able to pick you up. That's come so out interesting. So that explains, like, if you have a nap and you wake up in within, like, the certain, you know, there's yeah maybe, thing for another day, but there's that sleep cycle, and sometimes you can come out of it and you're like, all right, I feel good, and sometimes you come out of it and you're like, what's happening? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's why I don't like naps. I, it's hard to nail it. It's hard to nail it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I should note, I, I've mentioned on other shows that I have this thing called an aura ring, O-U-R-A. I don't have it on right now. I've been wearing it just to sleep now, but it's a sleep tracker and it tells me in the morning how my sleep was and it will actually show me the cycle. So it'll show me like when I got in bed, when I asked how long it took to actually fall asleep. Mm. And then when I went into light sleep and then it will show like, it goes up like this. It's like. And it goes into like, oh, I'm awake. And then I'm in light sleep again. Then I go down to deep. And then I go back up. And then I'm into REM sleep. So I'm always curious about this. I'm just awake. What do you do with that data? So like, mm -hmm. how can you use that information to, I don't know, make different choices or? Yeah, well, that that's that's just it. It's like, well, my sleep was really crappy last night. What did I do? Oh, I had two glasses of wine before bed, or I was drinking like coffee all day long, or I um, both of us a lot, you know. So it's um, yeah, I've actually I've been investigating my sleep for the past couple months now, and I've tried a bunch of things. The next thing we're going to talk about are tips for sleeping. Okay. So as we talk about this, I'll tell you about some things that I have learned that have worked. So again, this is these are just a few tips that Matthew Walker gives in his book, Why We Sleep, to 
totally, highly, highly recommend it. I think everyone should read this book. I got to read it. Yeah. Remember last time you posted um, on the Facebook page, the book. Yeah. So make sure you do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Absolutely. Yes. So stick to his sleep schedule. Now he emphasizes that sleeping in during the weekend or on vacation does not make up for sleep that you lost during the week. And it actually can make it really much harder to wake up when you need to wake up. Like if you oversleep on Saturday and Sunday, it's going to make Monday. So that's why we don't like Mondays <laughs> because, because we're sleeping in on the weekend yeah. and we wake up like what the heck? Sleeping in. Yeah. Everything gets out it's of whack. It's much more beneficial for your health uh, to stick to a sleep schedule. So, you know, go to bed at nine o'clock every night or, you know, the, oh, I didn't make a bullet for this, but the, the golden time is seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Right. You don't want to do less and you don't really want to do more. That makes seven sense. to nine. I, I aim for eight. I almost never get it for whatever reason. My child wakes up or I'm in the middle of something before I go to bed, but I usually hit about seven hours of sleep and that's okay. But I'd like it to be more, I'd like to be better. So stick to a sleep schedule, put the alarm on, you know, stick to it. Uh, exercise, but not late in the day. Exercise oh. helps you, helps your body to be able to sleep better. But if you exercise late in the day, then it, uh, it actually works in an adverse way. Right. And maybe we've talked about this before on previous shows. In the evening might be a time for getting some of that yin the yin yeah in included in your life with maybe it's yeah. breathing or having a hot shower bath stuff like that yeah like qigong um okay just fun to say yeah <laughs> yes qigong um so avoiding caffeine now i've been waiting all show to, to share this information <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I'm just I'm just gonna wait till we get to caffeine. So, all right, now listen. <laughs> I have been terrible lately since my surgery in February. I have been drinking so much caffeine, uh, and I'm trying to be better. But this is some startling information, people. So, caffeine has a half life of six to seven hours, and it has a quarter life. 12 hours. Right. So you drink that cup of coffee. Like how many of us drink a cup of coffee at two, three in the afternoon? Because that's like the sleepy time. That's when our bodies are like, we need a, a little nap or something. But instead we take, we drink some coffee. So that coffee is still in your body at two in the morning. Crazy. It's like taking I mean, a little shot of Starbucks at two in the morning. <laughs> Woo. Now, is that going to help you sleep? No, it's not optimal, Karen. It's not optimal, Karen. It's not optimal. Ooh, I don't know if anyone's yeah, noticing, but I'm really putting Karen's chops on this. Yes. <laughs> but hey, I I have been looking at my aura ring and my REM. I am not, I'm consistently not getting enough REM sleep. Mm. I get a lot of deep. I'm almost at the percent I should be, like mm. very, very close. I get a lot of deep sleep, but I don't get... The percentage of REM that I should be getting. And I know it's gotta be the caffeine. Mm. It's gotta be the caffeine. When would be the ideal cutoff time for you? 12. That's mm -hmm. when that's what all the Dr. X, Dr. Chatterjee, they, they enjoy their coffee until 12. So then what can you have instead, Karen? Herbal tea. You can She's that's a great disdain. Yeah. Herbal tea. <laughs> that's it. Is there any delicious beverage that you could have that like oh yeah tea? I love herbal tea. I really you are a tea lover. Tea. I I am. I'm a tea head, but I am also exhausted. Mm. So but this is what happens. We drink the caffeine, whether it's green tea, black tea, coffee, powered monster drinks, whatever people do. And then we don't sleep well. And soda. And then we wake up. And soda. We wake up. We're tired. So we drink more. And it's just this cycle. We're just 
And we know that that's what we're doing. Karen knows that that's what she's doing. Yeah. And it's hard to break the cycle. So, so just, just know that we're just here, not on a pedestal. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely we're not. not always doing it right. But there's we're the share, We're sharing our health journeys with you. And sleep is, is something I'm trying to fix. I'm actively trying to fix this. And so we'll, we'll get into that. We'll, okay, we'll so keep alcohol, track of you. <laughs> yeah. Alcohol was something that I mentioned before. It just keeps you yeah. in light sleep. So be careful about that. Relax before bed. So Ooh. read a book, you know, listen to some nice music, but just get your body to chill out. Yeah. How, however that is, get your body to Which chill is out. a big one for me. I often get into creative headspace in the evenings and then I am... Mm. It's not good. It's not great for sleep. <laughs> now, this one is also a huge thing I learned from the book, and I've been I've told so many people about this. Taking a hot bath or shower, because taking a hot bath and shower actually actually lowers your core body temperature. Mm. Take the hot shower, and it, it you know you get out your your skin's hot. It brings all of that blood up to. Oh. Skin to the surface, you're flushed, you know, and yep. it's actually lowering your core body temperature, which helps you to sleep better. And I tested this with the aura ring. Ooh, data it works. Data, friend. I got data. So cold shower in the morning, or cool, the cold shower. Cool. Cool. cool shower in the morning, and hot shower at night. Hot shower at night, yes. Enjoy that hot shower or bath. You know, a bath is really lovely too. And we did talk about sunlight exposure during the day. You know, try to get some sunlight. Do it naked, friends. Your neighbors are going to love you. Do it naked. Do it naked. <laughs> you heard it here. But listen, if you get arrested, we're not liable. <laughs> That's on you. You're going to put that out there right now. We take no responsibility. No we responsibility. At your own risk. All right. Well, that's what, that's what I got for today. Let's see. Um, Nathan is here with us still, I think. Or maybe he signed up. But he said, um, I definitely didn't get enough sleep last night. I'm dragging. And ah, we feel you. We totally feel you. It's like maybe I sometimes think that it's like something that just happens in the world. We are, There's days where everyone you talk to yeah. is like, yep, didn't sleep yep. at all. What was happening? What was happening in the universe that we all like? Yeah. Canada, Texas, Rhode Island. How come none of us slept last night? What the oh, heck? No. Something going on. Okay. So let us know yeah. in the future or if whenever you watch this, if you have any questions, if you're curious about something, Karen is going to show mm -hmm. share the name of that book and yes. um, our Facebook feed and at Hello Health Show on Facebook. That's our page on Facebook. Yay! We have 207 page likes now in just a couple weeks. So Yay. thank so you great, all everyone. for liking our page. And we're just going to keep dialing it in. We're going to get better and better. We're just figuring out how to best share information with everybody, making sure that it is of value. So if you do have any questions or things that you would like us to talk about, if you're curious about any aspect of functional medicine um, or coaching or anything like that, please don't be shy, DM us. I think I'm getting that right. Um, email us, whatever. Reach out, comment on things. Yeah. What you need, it's all about you know, just creating co conversation around a different way of living and optimizing our life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and follow and uh, join our group, Hello Health Show, on Facebook. You can just search for that under groups. And that's when we get a little bit more personal. Um, we're going to be having a sugar detox. I actually might do it on both. I haven't decided yet, um, but we'll be doing a sugar detox next month, 14 day sugar detox, which uh, I feel a show about sugar coming on. It's coming. It's a big topic. I feel like we could do a show about sugar every month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just like a reminder show. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh man, sugar. It's a thing. <laughs> sugar, sugar, sugar. Okay. Well, awesome. you can join our group. Come and hang and, out. And uh, hang out with us and like our page at Hello Health Show. And yeah, so we will be back next week. We're going to talk about creating a wellness vision for your life. Yeah. It's essential. It's essential. Yeah. Some good stuff. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Pumped. Yes. Thank you. We will see you next week. Have a joyful week. Bye. Bye.